Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be a new segment. Probably knock it out once a month. Uh, it's going to be Mechanics Corner, most likely with my good friend Adam Valensic of First Landings Aviation. Uh, Adam, uh, you've been in AMP for like how long? Oh, gosh, now probably over 10 years. So 10 years in an IA for, you know, seven right. at least. So. so all of this kind of stuff is is items that as pilots we learn about, but on kind of a superficial level, I would say. We don't really understand the, the right. massive depth of it. No, when when you approached me with this idea, yeah. I, I loved it because, right, instructors, I mean, they, they teach you out of the book how things like a Magneto works or right. a prop governor or whatever it might be, but... You never get your hands on it. Right. You never get to see one. So, sure, you've got the theory part of it down. Right. But let's kind of dive in a little deeper. For a lot of people, it's easier to understand if we can kind of open it up and yeah. explain how it actually works I, and it, show you. When I first saw a Magneto, it was on a picture and the P-Hack. Yeah. You know, pilot yep. 2D. Yeah. Different colors. And yep. Yeah. That's here's, it. here's how it works. Right? My simplistic understanding for Magnetos and the way that I kind of put it across in an easy way is it's kind of like a distributor cap in a car, an old car. So yeah, not modern. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, from there, let's get into it. Let's see. Right. What we've got. So I, I, yeah, essentially this is technology from, you know, 1920s, right? This, and not much has changed with how it works. Okay. So right. Distributor cap. I mean, right on the back, there you go. Right. All four spark plugs. Where they're going to connect and, and actually go to the spark plugs, the, the wires. So I think probably the best way to start, we'll start start from the end. And this doesn't have a gear on it. Okay. Normally it does. I just don't have any extra laying around. But you'd have a gear up here, and it's in, installed on the back of the engine, typically on the accessory case. Okay. And it spins, right? It's driven by the, the engine. And everything is internal to this. Okay. So that's why when you learn about them, you learn, well, we can shut off our master switch and the engine still runs. Even though the electrical system's turned off, Right. everything is self-contained in this. It generates its own electricity, converts that into high voltage, sends it to the spark plug, and at the right time, causes a spark. The other key, key part on the outside here is this stud right here. This is where the P lead connects. Okay. So when you're doing your mag check, which everybody does on their... Yep. You know, pre-flight checklist as they're doing their run-up. When you turn that switch to off, what that is doing is grounding this lead right here, or the magneto. Right. And when it grounds it, that shuts it off. It's dead. It's not going to produce the energy it needs to cause a spark. Okay. So you turn it back on, obviously it's ungrounded then. And that's why you've got to be careful on any time you're around a prop, you always assume it's live. Because if there's any issue with that P lead, that while it's sitting there, it's ungrounded, you potentially have a live magneto, and should you turn that prop through, it can spark and and cause a lot of damage. Now you got the big show. Exactly. <laughs> so up front here, we'd take the gear off if we had one. And this one has a, uh, basically this retards the timing. And if, if you've ever heard, as you turn a prop over, that click, that snap, Right. That's an impulse coupling. And what that is doing is as it's spinning over, it actually winds up a spring, right, to a certain point, and you get that click. Right. And what that's doing, it's retarding the timing for starting because your prop's spinning over slowly. And because of the advance, typically 25 degrees, if it were to spark then at such a, a low speed as it's turning over, you could end up, end up having the uh, plane kick back propeller spin in the wrong way right so it retards the timing makes it easier to start but it's kind of unique right we've got inside there a spring and we'll try not to have this Explode. shoot out here yeah <laughs> so there's the spring inside there okay and that's what winds up but you also it's got fly weights on here and i don't know if you can see them there right there's these stops okay so it's spinning slow enough those fly weights aren't going to fly out yet because it's not spinning fast enough. They hit the stop, cause it to wind up. Once the engine starts, RPM picks up, and those flyweights will actually sling out, and it won't hit the stop anymore, and it won't be retarding the timing once it's running. Right. So that's really what – the flyweights are kind of a safety to stop it from being able to go ahead and kick back in the other just, direction yeah, it's, too. So, yeah, at a low RPM, starting RPM, it, it's going to retard the timing. Okay. And that's why – 
certain airplanes, you'll find that only one magneto has an impulse coupling. Some have both. Like on the Pipers, our our new Pipers have dual impulse couplings. Right. The older Pipers only had one. So when you actually go to start on the key, it disables one magneto. Okay. And it only uses the one with the impulse coupling to actually start the engine. Okay. So, all right, we'll pop off the back here and then we'll start back here. So like we talked about, you've got your, you know, four spark plug wires. This is where your harness connects. And basically HT leads kind of basically the same as what's in a car, right? Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Very similar. Uh... All right. So once you remove this, I'll kind of pull this apart so I can... So you've got your gear down here spinning, right? It spins this gear. Okay. Which on the underside of this, you've got each of your four leads for the four cylinder. Right. And you've got your contactor here. As it's spinning, it hits each of these leads as okay. it's passing by. This rides on top of this lead, essentially, which is connected to your coil. Okay. This coil takes the mag... the magnetic energy that creates electricity and ups the voltage way high, right? Because that's how you're getting your, your spark. So behind here, and I don't know if you're able to see it, but you've got a magnet that spins, and there's coils around that magnet. And what happens when you have a magnetic field spinning inside coils? It creates electricity, yep. right? Yep. So very simple design. As long as your engine's spinning and this is connected to it, and it's not grounded, we're gonna generate electricity and it's gonna go through this coil. The voltage is gonna be upped and then it's gonna go through this pinion here, out here into your spark plug. So when somebody says, oh, you know, uh, blew a magneto, chances are it's gonna be the coil that blew out. A lot of times, that, another simple part. So what causes that that voltage, right? You're generating electricity on on the magnetic field and everything with the coils, but what causes it to collapse and create that spark are actually these points here. And I don't know if you can see them. Kind of. If you get down like right in there, you've got, you've got a set of points and a cam, right? That separates those points. Right. So when the, when those points are shut, we're creating electricity. Yep. As that point opens, it causes that field to collapse, which creates the spark. Okay. So that's why, obviously, timing is very important. And there's different, depending on the rotation of the magneto and everything, timing holes and everything to set it. But you can have points wear out. Point, the gaps change, because right as that spark goes across those points, it wears out. Yeah. So they need to be adjusted. Coils fail. Um, we've had impulse couplings fail. Right. But there's a reason you've got two magnetos. On an airplane, if one fails, you still got another to keep it operating. Uh, but they're simple. I mean, they've, like I said, 1920s, 30s technology that hasn't changed. I've never had one blow on me, uh, but I've heard, you know, the stories of people that uh, have said, oh, yeah, when it blew, it was a heck of a bang. Is that like basically down to the electric making the noise? Is it down to uh, the oil pack, probably? That's. I don't know, making a band, that sounds like something else. Typically, your your symptom that you're going to get when a magneto fails is going to be rough running, right. dropping RPM. I mean, if you have one completely fail and cruise, you honestly probably won't even realize it, right? Because right. okay. each cylinder's got two spark plugs. Yep. So losing one spark plug while you're operating is, is going to be a very small change in RPM okay. in cruise or anything. That's why when you do your run-up and you shut one off, I mean, you know, if, if all the timings and everything's set up and, and they're ideal, I mean, you're only seeing a 50 to 75 RPM drop. Right. So in cruise, and a magneto failure, you probably won't notice. Now, if it's if it's something else that fails, like, you know, God forbid something happens with the gear, right. drive, something explodes there, sure, you're going to have bigger issues because now you got metal and everything flying around Fine, inside your yeah. accessory case. Yeah. Um, so that might be, but I, I've only ever heard it on, like, YouTube 
a uh, couple of different videos. Oh, people are going to be hearing this on YouTube now. <laughs> some, somebody said, oh, you know, I was on Climb Out. I heard a bang. And I'm like, okay, I've never heard a bang. I, and then they said, oh, you know, it was the Magneto. Yeah, I mean, you could you could have an issue where, you know, these these are held down with just two, two nuts on studs that right. are tightened down. And shouldn't one of those loosen up, you know, and your Magneto timing changes. I mean, now you can end up with problems where you have, you know, pre-ignition, detonation. Yep. yep. And that'll cause a big bang. Well, that might be what it was then. That would be, uh, I mean, it's a little bit easier for me to understand with some of this stuff because, you know, my first car was on a distributor cap. Yeah. I mean, yep. that was, <laughs> nowadays everything's yeah. electric. So well, yeah, I mean, I had, yeah, my my old Mustang with the 289 in it. Yep. I mean, you know, a little different that it's not self-contained. You still have to have a battery hooked to it. But, yep. but right, essentially in timing and, and everything else, how it works. I mean, I used to time that just by listening to the engine run mm -hmm. and just Twisting the distributor just yep. enough, you just hear it enough, kind of yeah. pick up. Go, right, I'm happy with how that sounds. I'm, I'm good to go right there. Yeah, <laughs> let's lock it down. So, well, great. Obviously, we're looking forward to this segment. Um, there'll be another eleven after this one throughout the rest of the year. Yeah, I um, can't wait. Yeah, thank you very much for coming on again. Yeah, uh, no, and I'm if if you get questions, people want to pose yeah. questions. I'm happy. You know, next episode we can kind of recap. Yeah. Answer any of these questions and then, you know, whatever whatever the next thing is we're taking apart, we'll do that. Yeah. This would be a big payoff in my mind for anybody that already is a pilot or anyone that's in student pilot right exactly. now. Exactly. So yep. That's absolutely awesome. Adam, thanks again. Yeah, thank you. Take care and stay safe, everyone.